that the child, even in the poorest country where they're spending less than $100 per year per child for primary education, will have the opportunity to own the laptop, take it home, use it seamlessly for music, for books, for accessing the web. It's, it's really possible now. Wow, so we're talking about places from Peru to Uruguay to even Rwanda, but then, Nicholas, some of these places, some of these villages, communities, there's no power. So how do you make this laptop work? This laptop is designed specifically for the kind of environment that has no power. It winds up, for example. You can crank it. If you crank for one minute, you get ten minutes. Uh, it also can be read in the sunlight. It, it creates an internet connection for you automatically. And this is very important because we just can't take normal laptops. Fifty percent of the children of this world have no electricity at home or at school. Wow, pretty remarkable. So we're looking at the images here of this laptop. Very small, very handy, and that it's green, I guess, very inviting for a young person. You really had the young person in mind when you designed this. Very much so. It does things that children like to do. Uh, it's, it's not only a normal laptop, and it will run Windows, and it does run Linux. It's also something that has a lot of video, a lot of audio, but most importantly, all the laptops collaborate. They connect to each other. So, so when, when you have hundreds of them, they all make a network automatically. Now, you have one with you, I understand, yes, right? I, yes, I do. All right, so show me how, just how easy it is and, and why you think it is so valued for a kid who is in a small village in Rwanda, et cetera, to be connected with the rest of the world. What does it do for that child? Well, just think for a start that each laptop has a thousand books in it. Mm -hmm. And then if there are 20, village, 20 children in the village, they can all have different books or different parts of an encyclopedia. So just the book value is so, enough to get going. And then the fact that it's connected to the Internet yeah. uh, is, is, is almost a bonus. Uh, in the villages where we've done this project, uh -huh. children's first English word is Google. And that's wow. where they spend their time. Oh, my gosh. And it turns into sort of like a book. It's, it's got, it collapses. It's a tablet. You can use it in the sunlight. You can't use your laptop. I can't use my cell phone in the, south, in the sunlight because it's not readable. But this is particularly designed so kids can use it outdoors. Kids, because of these little cute ears, can <laughs> all talk to each other. Oh, wow. oh, that's amazing. So when you saw a kid in a developing nation using your invention right there for the first time. What did you see in that child? Um, you, did you kind of see the wheels in motion? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's a hope and a passion that just doesn't exist otherwise. To me, the biggest measure of success is that in one of our schools in Cambodia, 100% more kids showed up for first grade wow. the second year we ran the tests. And that's because the six-year-olds the previous year said, to the other six years old, how cool school uh -huh. was. Oh, neat. That's very important. So show me how it works. Um, you know, you, you hand this laptop to a kid just in that formation, and then what happens? Well, the hardest thing to do is to open it, actually. <laughs> it looks uh <-huh>. tricky. <laughs> and then once it's open, uh, a child takes about two minutes to really start using it very proficiently. An adult might take 30 or 40 minutes. <laughs> so what we do is we go into the village and we spend a week with the teachers first, partly to give them self-confidence yeah. so that they'll let the children basically help yeah, them. The kids are going to have questions. How do I make this thing work? Well, the kids will figure, <laughs> will be really teaching the teachers. And then, for example, there's a camera in here, so you can oh. do video conferencing with kids in other parts of the world. Oh, neat. One, one application that came up recently is that the kids brought it home, and the parents who were illiterate could leave messages and make messages for the teacher or receive messages Good. for the teacher because they were all in video and audio. So wow. we're finding lots of new applications uh, daily. And the Give One, Get One program that we're in the middle of right now right. is an effort to get the American people to buy one for themselves. But that's almost incidental. It's really about giving. Yeah. Wow. Because by default then, and yeah. really not by default because it's your design, another kid gets it, you know, in one of these developing nations. So you've got this, you know, give one, get one promotion going on through the end of the month, through November 26th, right? right. Where, do you, where do you find an XO, and why wouldn't you extend it 
further, you know, into you the go. holiday season when everybody's really eager to buy, spend, etc. Well, I asked you a lot right there. Yeah, I know you did. Um, <laughs> the, the way you find is you just go to the web. They're sold on the web. You can go to laptop.org or you can go to laptopgiving.org. Uh, and you can buy one, you can buy many. Uh, in fact, it's very important that if you buy one for three ninety nine, two yeah. hundred dollars of that is tax deductible. Mm, and as I said, you get a free oh internet gosh. connection for the year. So you, really got it, you got it for a hundred bucks. This is the best deal in town. But most importantly, it sends a laptop to a child in Africa or one of the yeah. poorest countries in the world. That is the best part. So your kid is able to communicate with someone who has just received this. I mean, what an incredible gift and teaching tool, not just for the kid who's abroad, but your kid too. It's, it's, it changes the life of a child, and our goal is nothing short of eliminating poverty. Nicholas Negroponte, XO is the computer, laptop.org, to get one. Well, getting mud all over your beautiful white wedding dress. Would you do that? What is she doing? For some brides, it apparently is the...